Hi guys, it's Claire Nocti. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be exploring an intense nakshatra of makeovers, of ultimate and extreme inner and outer transformations. This is the nakshatra exploring such mysteries as the encountering and assimilating of the shadow, the taking on and merging into powerful alter egos, and producing the unmatched lightning bolt power, the supreme fire, that builds only through the clashing of opposites inside and outside of the self, the shaka nakshatra. Before I start, I'll mention that some of the themes I'll be exploring today extend to the trine, Jupiter World Nakshatras, Punarvasu, and Porvabhajapada. This is for reasons that if you've seen the videos that I've previously done on these nakshatras, you will undoubtedly understand. However, those many examples in this video context will be especially supplemental, intuitive casting that comes from the Jupiter energy present on themes which are rooted in Vishaka, but I'll also explain some differences between the three as I go, and I'll especially differentiate between more on my Patreon in an exclusive video. On this dive into Vishaka's mysteries, channeled over the centuries through its natives and their lives and art, I will go through the complete arc that this nakshatra takes, through its alchemical split, its descent into division, and then its reconciliation, first bouncing between dangerous extremes and then establishing profound and potent balance. Sometimes, you have to pretend to be someone else to get what you want. Do you ever worry that you're gonna lose yourself? To begin, I'll introduce you to the standard Jupiterian character in her initial state. One key thing ties Jupiterians together in these films in different ways, and that is the idea that she has an innate disinterest or detachment from actions relating to the magnetic principle, drawing in attention or resources. Instead, she's inclined almost exclusively to creative acts, or being able to give to or support others through generating resources or gaining skills and knowledge. You have one of these bags? You know, we could hawk that and feed a whole third world country. Therefore, arts, social justices like feminism or environmentalism, or their studies consume all of their energy and time. Mitch, I don't conform to typical high school norms, okay? I read Sylvia Plath. You run like a girl. I am a girl. Oh, uh, you know what I mean. Obviously, I don't. Stop the bull bond massacre! Sign up now! have right to a special, make growth school more tofu friendly. As I've explored before, Jupiter is a masculine planet and is the great benefit, the planet of expansion, abundance, and generosity. These women are introduced as outcasts, rebels, or nerds due to their higher levels of inner abundance. I get totally sick of all the creeps and losers and weirdos. But those are our people. And everyone kind of thinks we're losers. Do you remember what they called you in high school? Which means they aren't initially busied with the conventional attitudes of many women or girls around them. Ty, you don't have time to change, but you could hit a few balls in those clothes. She could be a farmer in those clothes. Teach me to wear white jeans after Labor Day. I don't think you're supposed to wear white jeans after 1983. On things associated with the feminine Edenati, like self purification and other actions displaying an interest in personally drawing in energy and attention. My ugly duckling. And here's a list of ideas I came up with for fundraisers, you know, that might make us a little more popular. Start a beekeeping club. Mm hmm. With the, we could have the masks even. Are you having social problems? No. Yes. She's got no friends. A common way such an idea is solidified in the films is through the Jupiter woman being referred to or introducing herself as invisible. Sorry, I didn't see you. I used to be anonymous, invisible to the opposite sex. If Google Earth were a guy, he couldn't find me if I was dressed up as a 10-story building. Somebody sat on me again. I was in seventh grade when I realized I was invisible. Two months ago, you couldn't have picked me out of a crowd. <laughs> Told you. <laughs> I'm over there. This drives home the total initial lack of orientation into magnetism. In contrast, the Jupiterian woman is shown as initially neglecting her personal appearance. Do not wear that outfit again. Wear a dress, a skirt or something. If you don't like this, I take it. Come on, you're prettier than that. Clothes can be crucial for confidence and an overall sense of well-being. Bright clothes don't have to be expensive. No, all you need are friends of about the same size. Do you not like my clothes? I am loving all the holes in your pants. You look like a little Dutch boy. My, what an adorable shirt you're wearing. Nice socks. <laughs> At times, taking this to the level of purposely putting on a sort of armor that makes her seem almost socially repellent or aggressive. Come on, scary and inaccessible is another story. 
with a conscious or unconscious aversion to being pursued or perceived, but rather redirecting all her vitality towards impacting her environment. As always, this is as good as it's gonna get. The paint splattered, non-form-fitting clothing, unroll your messy hair or brows, and lack of makeup tends to unite them. Guys, she's got glasses and a ponytail. Oh, look at that. She's got paint on her overalls. What is that? Showing their energy flow being totally geared towards creation and expansion of ideas. What did they say in art school? They said I was a genius, right? I'm always, I always encourage your talent. No talent. I'm not talking about talent. I said genius. Genius. And neglecting to flow in ways that nourish them or tame and groom them as an object of attention themselves. Relating to this character type, I explore in my artistic ebook the many titles and accomplishments of Vishaka women in the arts throughout history. You drew that? Uh, yeah. One here. You didn't trace this? Uh-uh. No. Did you do these? Why shouldn't I? But well, the point is how you could. They're really professional. Especially having the courage and rebellious nature to be creative at times when women had been largely excluded or not encouraged to do so. Like the woman warrior painter Vishaka Moon Artemisia Gentileschi. I feel like he's holding me back and I just want to be artistic and philosophical. The outsider or loner status of these Jupiterians is also solidified in these works by an emphasis on their obscure, generally more refined artistic tastes in comparison to their peers. She's into stuff like old school Elvis Costello, she listens to obscure podcasts, she reads Dave Eggers. She's deep, man. So if he doesn't like people, what does he like? The photography. What about music? Only weird old stuff no one else listens to. Bad brain, bad religion. I listen to Bikini Kill, and I eat tofu. I'm a unique rebel. What about movies? The same thing. Everything is Kurosawa, Kung Fu, or Kubrick. The latter two Jupiter-ruled nakshatras share an artistic archetype, which is marked by a more determined, competitive desire to make an impact in the arts, social, justices, or their chosen area of study. I read about this riot in Mogadishu. This represents the pain of that night. It's about corporate greed destroying our hearts and leaving us the, the hollow shells. I don't care about any of that. Then Punarvasu, which I also explore in my art ebook, distinguishes itself with a more relaxed bohemian flower child energy. Let's give a warm welcome to Imelda, who is leading us as retreat mother for the fourth year in a row. We inspire the music. We're here because of the music. Protests, clove cigarettes, bongos, whatever it is you beat Nick's do. She has a lack of inhibition due to her boundlessness, which produces a creative, flowy nature. I just met this producer of this like teeny record company who said that I have a very fresh, offbeat sound. I have a very strong visual style. Yes, you know. yes, you do. Yes, you do. Yeah, definitely. Oh, do you paint also? Ask him. I, he stole everything from me. His whole style. She likes to make up these stories. Juan Antonio, your whole way of seeing is mine. Where she embraces and nurtures any idea that comes to her lovingly with no interest in self-limitation. Cheddar cheese and Brussels sprouts. Bake into a pie. You love Brussels sprouts and you love cheddar cheese. I do, yeah. No, it sounds very original. Is that a new recipe you found? No, I made it up. This leads her to playing with, even automatically channeling, both surreal forms and spiritual messages. Once this energy is given life, everything you know will have to change. He who betrayed his friends whose heart drops with murder shall break free. This is not the energy I wanted to start my vision quest with. She has ideas like free love, and her outcast status tends to come from her expansive disinterest in fitting into society's binds. You got to know what you love and you've got to get a real kick out of it, or there's too much damn trouble in it to spoil this affair of living from beginning to end if you let it. For an interesting contrast of the different attitudes towards art that can appear between these two nakshatras, I'm painting. I see that. Does it make everything more interesting? You can check the movie Patterson. The New Yorker describes Tabu Punarvasu Goshifte Farahani's character as a butterfly of unburdened delight and impulsive activity, as well as being a bundle of enthusiasm for her more inhibited, skeptical, and serious Vishaka partner's secret poetry. While these films allude to the nature of Jupiter to be in a unique, unbalanced state oriented only towards giving through art or social justice, neglecting to put energy into areas like one's appearance and taking in general, I was a Billie Jean King in a sea of Maria Sharapova's. Other films depict this slightly differently, more through the ideas I've shown before of giving through emotional tolerance and extreme kindness. You are the nicest guy. Uh, really, you are. Yeah. 
Charlie, isn't Stanley the nicest guy? The best. If only they knew the love that I contain, it could be theirs for but a single word of kindness. The Vishaka arc also often begins with a character who has some early life experience where they maladaptively suppress any of their selfish traits, creating a uniquely tolerant, charitable, and good-natured personality. This early life split is emphasized in films Slumberland, Me, Myself, and Irene, and Cruella. In the first, the character Philip's brother abandons him, which causes him to repress all of his lively and adventurous traits, creating a kind, meek, and gentle leftover personality. All of his suppressed traits are personified in stuck on the dream plane as the Vishaka moon native Jason Momoa, the horned character Flip. In Me, Myself, and Irene, Vishaka ascendant Jim Carrey plays a man, Charlie, who is cheated on by the love of his life. The pain and shame of this causes a total inversion of all of his self-advocating or self-serving emotions into repression, being personified as the character Hank. I was a big piece of the personality pie back then. When she left him, Charlie went numb. Who is, at the start of the film, buried and inactive. Vishaka's son, Emma Stone, brought strong Vishaka themes into the villainous Cruella's backstory. She plays a mischievous and rebellious young girl, Estella, who has nicknamed her bad-behaving self Cruella. What do you say to Cruella when she tries to get the better of you? Thank you for coming, but you may go now. Good. Now say goodbye to her. Goodbye, Cruella. When her mom, just prior to her death, asks her only to be good, Estella makes the decision to purposefully suppress any of her misbehaved inclinations. And after that, no more flip. I was just Philip. Therefore, these characters are distinctly divided in two. One mild, timid personality focused on pleasing others, and one repressed shadow self, consisting of all the egoic and self-rooted needs, emotions, and desires that were suppressed and are currently dormant. The most influential and crucial piece of art behind this theme is the strange case of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde by the Vishaka Sun writer Robert Louis Stevenson. It's the story of a kind and respected English doctor, often shown as devoted to giving to others freely and fully, such as is shown in the first full-length film version from 1920 which starred Vishaka Ascendant John Barrymore in the title role. To produce such a good-natured and benefic outer personality, he has repressed his evil urges. In an attempt to control this, to essentially exaggerate the oppositions and become good, charitable, and giving to a maximum, he develops a serum that he believes will effectively compartmentalize any remnant of his dark side. These two carry on an eternal struggle in the nature of man, yet they are chained together. That chain spells repression to the evil remorse to the good. If these two selves could be separated from each other, how much freer the good in us would be. What heights it might scale. The potion allows him to temporarily transform into the immoral and monstrous Mr. Hyde, embodying and acting on all the repressed urges. The well-known Nutty Professor films are a parody of this iconic tale, and the Dr. Jekyll-like character was originally portrayed by the Poonarvasu Porva Bajrapada native Jerry Lewis, and even more famously reprised by Vishaka Moon, Eddie Murphy. Murphy portrays a brainy and kind-hearted university professor, and this version included another symbol for Jupiterian abundance, his obese city ruled by the planet Jupiter, which he feels isolates him from romantic fulfillment. Psychologist Carl Jung has a concept that strongly ties to Vishaka's themes, that of an antiodromia, which means opposite running course, with Stevenson's novella being considered the key literary example. When we repress a certain aspect of the self, putting on what he calls a persona, the Latin word for mask. That's correct, Wendy. We all wear masks, metaphorically speaking. It sets the stage for an antiodromia, the emergence of the repressed individuality, unlocking buried opposites within. If deep down inside you're a little repressed and a hopeless romantic, you become some sort of a love crazy wild man. I quote, it's similar to the principle of equilibrium in the natural world, in that any extreme is opposed by the system in order to restore balance, just as Vishaka completes and bridges out of the Rashi of the scales, Libra. When things get to their extreme, they turn into their opposite. Young adds that this characteristic phenomenon practically always occurs when an extreme, one-sided tendency dominates conscious life. Remember? Nice guys finish last. You're Mr. Nice Guy? <laughs> yes! In time, an equally powerful counterposition is built up, which first inhibits the conscious performance and subsequently breaks through the conscious control. A thing psychically morphs into its shadow opposite, in repression of psychic forces that are thereby allocated into something powerful and threatening. There's something powerful bubbling up inside me, Father, and I'm afraid that someday 
If I don't do something, I'm gonna explode. A central premise of the I Ching, for example, is that yang lines become yin when they have reached their extreme and vice versa. There is a darkness inside of me. It wants to get out, wants to walk around, and it wants to buy some shoes, and it wants to it wants to walk up with the people and say, hey. Gator don't play no shit. You hear, you feel me? Therefore, the more extreme one's personality is, like the caring, ever tolerant traits shown with some of these Jupiterian natives. This is my dream house. It's Barbie's dream house. It's not Ken's dream house, right? Ha ha ha, right as always. Or the only creative and discharging tendencies, the more extreme the shadow is. Mad, bad, and dangerous to know. Name Flip. As powerfully giving as the persona is, is as powerfully self-serving and dangerous as the shadow is increasingly becoming. I have feelings that I can't explain, driving me insane. All my life been so polite. Spending all those years trapped behind a wall of politeness, bound and gagged. A dark and silent world where nothing grows but the anger. In this way, an antiodromia is said to foreshadow a total rebirth of the personality. Vishaka separates initially from the consuming evil inclination, called in Judaism, for example, the Yetzirhara, and therefore this inclination grows vast and hidden. Yet reaccessing this inclination becomes entirely crucial for the restoration of balance. Jung states on this phenomenon, we can never know what evil may not be necessary in order to produce good by an antiodromia and what good may possibly lead to evil. If you have a man who is a man, he will be a man who is 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 a man. In many of these films, a traumatic experience, a kind of snap lightning bolt event, oh, wow. which they often intuitively include quite literally, causes the symbolic breakdown of the mask or persona and forces the unexpected but necessary takeover by the shadow, the sudden opposite running course of an antiodromia. In a moment of desperation, after being made fun of mercilessly in front of his love interest, is with a woman too. Oh. Sherman recklessly tests on himself a weight loss drug he's been developing and accidentally transforms completely into the thin, vigorous, charismatic, but egomaniacal alter ego buddy love. If you're scratching the cards, you're scratching your ass. You are too fine to be giving me curbside service. Another parody version, especially channeling Vishaka's sexy alter ego themes, is Dr. Heckle and Mr. Hype. Were I not so far beyond mere ugliness? I might wish to be handsome. It stars Vishaka send in Oliver Reed as a hideous, lovesick doctor who transforms at different intervals into a handsome, direct, and seductive oh my God, but evil and murderous alter ego Mr. Hype. Vishaka send in Jim Carrey's film The Mask is strikingly similar. He begins as an ordinary man, the pining Jupiter nice guy archetype. We all wear masks, metaphorically speaking. We suppress the id, our darkest desires, and adopt a more socially acceptable image. And finds a mask which transforms him episodically into a bold and sexually forward troublemaker. Is it written in the stars that we are destined to fraternize? I'd like to think so! <laughs> For the previously explored characters, at the same time, the repressed evil inclination Hank emerges to overthrow the kind-hearted Charlie for periods of time. Apparently Hank is trying to get out. Trying to get out? What do, what do you mean? Get out? How did he get in? You created him. By not dealing with your problems, Charlie. And to break through the difficult situations he's gotten himself into through his unbalanced mercy and pushover nature. You've been avoiding confrontation, but this guy inside... Hank? He doesn't. Doctors feel that uh, you've created this character uh, out of necessity. You never stick up for yourself. Head shrink, he told me how to do a personality, you know, split, schizo, and all that jazz. Then he lays an $82 tab on me, so I give him 41 bucks, and I said, get the other 41 from the other guy. <laughs> I've previously explored the same plot channeled through Porva Bajapata Moon, Michael Cera, and Youth in Revolt, playing Nick, a boy who creates a French alter ego, Francois. To overcome the inhibitions that compel me to be law-abiding, polite to my elders and excessively nice, I have decided to create a supplementary persona named Francois Dillinger. Bold, contemptuous of authority, and irresistible to women. 
to be bold enough to do the rebellious things that would satisfy his crush. In many cases, the main benefit the alter ego provides for the native is the ability to now gain the attention of their love interest who previously friend-zoned or ignored them. Here I am, talking your ear off once again about Buddy. <laughs> no, it's quite all right. Listen, don't you worry about Buddy. I'll find him for you. The guy they say brought this place? The man. Do you think you can have him meet me tonight? I might be able to work something out. Thanks, Stanley. You really are a nice guy. Thank you for being such a good friend to me. Good for you. So for both men and women, this unbalanced nature towards abundance that I've explored can cause a lack of fulfillment in the area of romantic or social pleasure in one's life, initially separating them from the opposite sex in a way that feels unsatisfying, often causing them to be in situations of pining over someone more high status in the social hierarchy. What? What? You never saw two idiots exchange saliva before? I'm in love with him. Oh, that's so sweet. How long have you guys been going out? Oh. <sighs> No, we are not going out. I, um, I've never even talked to him. I was always so clumsy with my own. I should think you were the least clumsy person I'd ever met. I've had the nerve to fall in love a thousand times, and every day, somehow it always makes me feel subversive. Steve, you will fall in love with me. You will take me away from this place. Do you like gum? Sure. Oh, I don't have any. I was just... His voice is so mellifluous. I could just get one kiss. For Estella, though, she faces a situation where she must tap into and release the repressed alter ego Cruella. So Estella can't go to the ball. I know someone who can. In order to gain revenge and rise out of the unfair scenario she's fallen into, in which her boss takes advantage of her artistic skill and steals her work. It's not Estella. That's the past. She brings back her split hair color, which also calls to mind the split dye staple hairstyle of the Bishaka ascendant musician Melanie Martinez. The film Anion, written and directed by Poonarasu Moon Shankar and starring Porva Bajapata Moon Vikram, follows an idealistic lawyer who splits into two alter egos for both of these different reasons, one for vigilante justice and revenge, and one to become a suave and sexually forward model to win over the woman who has friend-zoned him. <laughs> Ambi's a useless fellow. Yet to wash him on Nandani Laupana. Are they be exist part of the Triama? Ulla Kuli Purinki. Application put to Sodapi. Suicide where you can point her. Up on an Amande. I will take you at your love alarm. Shake Panna champagne bottle, Murray. Hundreds of birds, thousands of flowers, tons and tons of love in a peach yard. Now she loves me. So while many films explore Vishaka themes through these extremes like scientific experiments, magical items, and astral experiences, one more grounded and practical manifestation can be found abundantly in the concept of the makeover. Let's do a makeover. <gasps> no. <laughs> no. We have to fix no. this. Oh, I really don't want to. We have to do. Oh, please don't say we make a makeover. <gasps> Yay! I am so problematic. Just consider it like another thesis topic, you know? Conventional archetypes of beauty and their effect on the opposite sex. Just taking the poor girl under my wing. You can't wear anything you own. We need to clean you up. How up are we talking about? To make an impact, you have to go to extremes. The previously quote-unquote invisible Jupiterians are physically groomed and refined. When was the last time you tweezed? What? is in your eyebrows. Never. Why? An individual or group tames them with a new hairstyle. This particular quaff doesn't really go with your face shape. What do you have in mind? You'd really have to trust me. The most important thing for you to do now is trust me. Wait, wait how much am I cutting? Plucked brows, new and more flattering clothing. I'm a lot fatter than you are, but I think we could pin it. The iconic removal of glasses, and so on. You ever think about contacts? I have them, I just never wear them. I don't know, the idea of touching my eyes. Because your eyes are really beautiful. Do you wear contact lens? Well, I have them, but I don't really like to wear them that much. Now, you do. But I feel so undressed without them. It's good for you to feel that way. They are then introduced to their social circle as something of a new person. Jamie It's like not even the same person. Jamie Stain Pants. You are now in Forevermore, the coolest, most mysterious student at Rose Hill Country Day. Oh my god, do you see how boys are responding? My heart is totally bursting. Gaining the attention of those who previously didn't know they existed. This is insane. <laughs> You're hot now. Get used to it. Who are you? Who 
destroyed you. Vishaka Ascendant Betty Davis starred in what is considered the first makeover movie of this kind, oh, now Voyager. Who is the fat lady with the heavy brows and all the hair? Where are you? Taking a picture? I'm the fat lady with the heavy brows and all the hair. Since then, Jupiterians have been heavily involved in the ugly duckling transformation trope. I'm not Josie Grossy anymore. That's it. Now, scream it. I'm not Josie Grossy anymore! May I present the new, not improved, but different, Laney Box. With trying examples like the modern Holy Grail film She Saw That, being written by Poonarvesu Moon native R. Lee Fleming, and starring a Porva Vajrapada Moon native Rachel Lee Cook. In both parody or remake versions of this movie, Jupiterians also star as the one undergoing the makeover. Vishaka Moon Chyler Lee in Not Another Teen Movie, who was inspired by two Jupiter women, Cook, as well as Molly Ringwald in Pretty in Pink. And then the third version, He Saw That, stars Poonarvesu ascendant Tanner Buchanan. Prince Charming is a dick! Bring on the frogs! Ribbit. The Jupiter Nakshatra native who is used to involving herself totally in creative or otherwise non-self-centered acts is initiated into her magnetism or femininity. So this is what it feels like to not be invisible. We weren't exactly invisible before, just the anti-hot. And she gets her first experiences of the social and romantic benefits that seem to come with it. This is my birthday party? Happy birthday! <laughs> She initially felt repellent, but in experiencing the feeling of receiving attention, she starts to lean into it more and more heavily. The way this comes about for makeover films versus split personality films is also slightly different in that, as I said, it's usually asserted on her first. Especially through women or a group of women in non-romantic cases. Catherine is one of the most popular girls at school. Listen to whatever she has to say and you'll go far. Would you look at that girl? She is so adorably clueless. We've got to adopt her. Are you a new student? Uh, yes. We thought so. We'd like to help you. But you have us, and we can make you into anything. I'm Frankenstein, and you're Frankenstein's bad bitch. Tracy was playing Barbies before she met Evie! And I'll explore the romantic cases dynamic, the nakshatra that Vishakas are especially romantically compatible with, as well as taming differences between the three Jupiter World nakshatras. Gentlemen, here's the plan. We turn Nelly Leroy into a lady in a Patreon exclusive. So through the external change, experiencing different responses. Who's that? She knew. I don't know, but she is making that uniform work. You're the most popular girl in school. Everybody wants to take your picture. Everybody wants to be your best friend. I've waited my whole life to fit in, and I finally feel like I do. What was happening? Ty being the most popular girl in school? It was like some sort of alternate universe. What have the Zetas become? Oh my god. Popular. She begins acting out or playing with changes in her personality, which is interesting in that in the feminine-focused films, there's more of an emphasis on approaching external changes first to initiate a transformation of the inner state and start to change her desires. Boy, considering how clueless she was, Ty certainly had that damsel in distress act down. The feminine fittingly in occultism is considered to rule the horizontal axis of the material plane, and it's more readily through changes here first rather than the emphasis on on virility and confidence in many male versions of the tale, that transformation is sparked. In adjusting to value her social status and appearance, she slowly becomes more inwardly self-assured, judgmental, discerning, exclusive, and so on. John Tucker, there's only one guy out there for me, but you are not him. Which contrasts the more pining, giving, and oftentimes open way that she acted before. I still can't get over on not having met. Well, as a matter of fact, we have. I'm mystified. Well, when we were children, you were the only boy who danced with me in dancing school. The almost is when you were supposed to usher at my coming out party and didn't show up. I'm covered with shame. I hope you're going to allow me to make up for my past rudeness. The extreme and rapid change is unstable though, and it causes her, like Jekyll and Hyde, to juggle between her old and new identities. Unsure of when to listen to one impulse or the other, as I'll explore more shortly. The Vishaka Moon singer Beyonce is known for having created the alter ego Sasha Fierce as an extroverted and bold stage persona to counterbalance her more shy, natural personality. And how is Sasha Fierce different than I am? Well, I know, you know, definitely wearing that bodysuit, I can never walk out here and do yes. that. I was pretty shy. When I was with other kids, I barely spoke. But when I was with your dad in our dreams, I could be whoever I wanted to be. And for me, that was flip. 
The moment right before when you're nervous and, and that other thing kind of takes over for you, then Sasha Fierce appears in my posture and, and the way I speak and everything is different. She described Sasha, I quote, as being too aggressive, too strong, too sassy, and too sexy, remarking that she's not like her at all. It reminds me as well of the sexy and bold alter ego that Vishaka's son Emma Stone creates for herself in Easy A. Hey, Anson. Hey. I just realized the funniest thing. My name is an anagram for I love. What's a, what's an anagram? Look it up, big boy. And that also calls to mind Porva Bajapata Moon, Evan Rachel Woods' overnight transformation. Who let her out of the cabbage patch? To a new, cooler, bad girl persona in 13. Your new vibe is high status cunt. But no, is it like a process that happens too? Like you were talking about the high heels, like once the lashes go on and the Absolutely. makeup and all that stuff. I can do that. Although Sasha Fierce is perhaps the clearest and most well-known example of an alter ego of this type in Hollywood, alter egos are quite common in the musical arts, which I've explored before in videos and my ebook are very much dominated by Jupiter World Nakshatras and Vishaka preeminently. So whether or not a musician has Vishaka or Jupiter World Nakshatras or not, it's interesting that this particular art form, which is so linked to these energies, is dominated by such an idea. Sometimes it was... It was a downer when you went from all the hype of being Hannah Montana and people scream your name and whatever and then you do take the wig off and you take off the eyelashes and all the makeup and you're like okay this is who I really am. Of course Vishaka Moon Miley Cyrus gained her fame playing Miley Stewart, a teenage girl living a double life as a famous pop singer Hannah Montana, a bold alter ego she adopted so she could also maintain her normal life as a typical teenager. Being two people seemed like such a great idea back then. The term alter ego is also often used as a way to describe the character a director channels themselves into in the films that he or she creates, and film directing is another area Vishaka is very prominent, with examples like David Lynch and Martin Scorsese both being especially known for creating on-screen more idealized alter egos, grounding themselves in this way into the fake worlds using actors that, as astrology can help to expose and solidify, are representative of different unexpressed parts of themselves. In that sense, it becomes clear how the ability to create alter egos in general is empowering for the arts, whether those doing so are Vishaka or not, as it helps you shed the inhibition to access the pent-up, virile, bold, or honest traits required for being distinguished and acclaimed, which one may be suppressing through the persona to be socially normal and therefore more mild and suppressed overall. So through these different outlets, Vishaka is established as a single being composed of two parts. My analysis of this soul the human psyche leads me to believe that man is not truly one, but truly two. As long as there's two of you, I don't think there can be an us. Those familiar with traditional associations of this nakshatra will understand this immediately. Vishaka means forked or branched, alluding to this dual nature and the overall idea that Vishaka relates to the growths of reality that require splitting to occur, like the branch or the lightning bolt. People walk along the road, they come to a fork in the road, they're confused, they don't know which way to take. It's rolled by the dual deity Indragni and is a mixed Mishra nakshatra, the only one along with Kritika. Both of these nakshatras possess this mixed quality and tie to the god of fire Agni, with the presence of two obvious components. The fire keeps us alive through its ability to warm and dry us and cook our food. However, it's also especially dangerous. We are officially over all rats! With the potential to cause immediate pain and damage. I have to take a pill every six hours or I feel funny. What's it called? Advanced Delusionary Schizophrenia with Involuntary Narcissistic Rage. Indragni has one translation as the fire produced from the contact of the clouds, and this ties to the lightning bolt energy of this nakshatra. Vishaka's snap emergence event of the sexier viral alter ego. There was no lady on this cruise that was as popular as you were. Oh, thank you. <laughs> where the shadow is released and begins taking over the personality is only possible through immense agitation. Every night is ghost mm -hmm. Every night. Forever. Get all that man and release all that that's been built up for 35 years. Just warning and warning and warning. Whoo! Might make your head blow off. This is the agitation in the clouds producing the lightning strike. Cruella was in a box a long time. Now instead I can be the one who makes guest appearances. <laughs> the two opposites come to pure, isolated extremes. One of him strives for the nobilities of life. This we call his good self. The other 
seeks an expression of impulses that bind him to some dim animal relation with the earth. My son Billy got the lead in the high school musical. Well, I guess he likes the cock after all. This we may call the bad. And only then, in this state of total separation, clash within. He may have advanced illusionary schizophrenia with involuntary narcissistic rage, but he is a very gentle person. Gators bitches better be using jimmies. Just as, I quote Sandra Blakesley, lightning occurs through the separation of positive and negative electrical charges that amass in different parts of the cloud. Just be quiet and let me blow some shit up. Okay, can I make one request since it's my life that we're talking about here? Can we keep it to the absolute minimum amount of destruction possible? Perfect, okay. Absolute minimum, that's good. And periodically leap towards each other, generating intense heat and light when they meet. The Vedra weapon symbolizes the force of the Thunderbolt and is considered one of the most powerful weapons in the universe. Although often considered the same as lightning, it's more subtle and complex. It's the antagonistic melding of yin and yang together to produce extreme transformation, this powerful shock that advances growth. You were the same woman who a few months ago had no single interest in the world. No. The goddess Chinamasta, also called Indrani, the consort of Indra, is also associated with Vishaka Nakshatra, and her epithet Vedra Vairachaniye alludes to her Vedra power, meaning radiant like the Vedra. She is flanked by Takini and Varnini, and together they represent the idea of balance through signifying the Nadis, Ida, Pingala, and Shashumna. Rahu Nakshatras come prior to Jupiter ones, and Rahu essentially creates division between you and your libido, your lower center, and your mascot or personal protector which I'll explore more in the future. Vishaka is ultimately the middle stage of removing the division that Rahu created here, reaccessing the carnal nature to become whole, as one isn't whole and is vulnerable and weak without it. Additionally, those under the sway of their evil inclination without the balancing control of goodness over it face immense consequences, and Vishaka, as well as all jupiter ruled nakshatras in subtly different ways, deals with that equipoise. Just as your left hand and your right hand are mere images of one another, right? Identical and yet opposite. Although they may look the same, they don't always behave the same. So here, after the shadow's emergence through snap events or makeovers, the Vishaka arc takes a key turn. The shadow's power becomes so strong that it starts to seemingly have a mind of its own. It chaotically acts under the needs and burning desires of the ego and self, unafraid to cause disruption and an explosive urge to finally elevate the self above others, while the original personalities then scramble to try to pick up the pieces, maintain harmony, and continue to serve others. Even though it was my slutty alter ego that said a bad word in school. It was my ass that got in trouble, which was a place my ass had never been before. This can also be considered in the way that Vishaka is often translated as the poison vessel, although the root words differ in that it stores and tolerates all negative emotions of itself and others, and at some point must disassociate from and detach from this poison and start empowering itself and acting on its own needs and desires. Charlie's a mouse that got you into the maze. I'm the rat who knows how to find the cheese. Cruella gets things done. Stella does not. And I have things to do. You've been making all the decisions for 16 years and look at where you are. I'm here to rescue you from yourself. Young states, I quote, the dissolution of the persona and the launch of the individuation process also brings with it the danger of falling victim to the shadow, the black shadow which everybody carries with him, the hidden aspect of the personality, resulting in a merger with the shadow. As the process begins in which the suppressed id starts overriding the ego, Seems as if someone's on a downward spiral. In makeover films and otherwise, the Jupiterian individual becomes enamored by the benefits that their dangerous alter ego obtains for them. Just you have totally transitioned. Transition? Into our group? So hard to do. People go all through high school trying to transition and they never make it. Who could have known that underneath all of that rebellion there was a heartbreaker dying to get out? different extents, they become lost in the enthusiasm of their growing desirability, popularity, and influence. Hey, Ambo! You're coming tonight, right, man? Oh well, yeah, we'll be there. All right, man! Ambo he really has entered their world. As they obtain things that they've never gotten to experience, his or her ambition grows further and further. Theater major. Ooh, her father owns like half of Aspen. Yes. Yeah. Nancy Nagel, English major from Florida. But she does drive a Porsche. Don't the slackers prefer that grassy knoll over there? <laughs>
<laughs> and they cave into one temptation for more social or sexual power or glory after another. He or she becomes corrupt in the expansion and begins to completely lose themselves. You run with a pretty intense crowd these days. We've also had quite the change this year. The new fits, blonde mm. hair. It's rad, don't get me wrong. I'm still here for the Eleanor I met on the first day of school. I have met some pretty nice guys lately. Right, yeah, the drummer, the guy in rehab, and throwing that one from the tanning salon, you've hit the trifecta. When did you get like this? Perhaps you should get a wardrobe, you abominable twat. The Hannah Montana movie opens with Miley having begun to lose her original self through her growing love for her Hannah alter ego. She's a superstar, I can get her a private jet if she wants. Yes! I've always wanted one of those. And the luxuries and attention that she gains through being her. For this reason, her dad forces her to distance from her Hannah personality and return to her hometown. Hannah means everything to me. And that right there might just be the problem. Think of it as a Hannah detox. At this point of the arc, the Jupiterian is often now more disassociated from their prior inner abundance that brought them to art, knowledge, or social justice. Molly, all you ever wanted to do was sing. Hannah let you do that and still have a normal life. To be honest, I just don't know what she's about anymore. You've made F's on your last retest. You were one of my best students. Tracy, your poem at the beginning of the year was one of the most incredible I've ever read. Snack Time owns Captain Peg Lake Tuna, which isn't altogether now dolphin friendly. Screw the dolphins. What's wrong with you? Jesse, am I kissable? It's my hips, isn't it? The original, giving and kinder personality makes fewer and fewer appearances to balance the reckless and self-serving behaviors of the alter ego. You can say if you want, as my bride wife, or my long-term, low-commitment, distance girlfriend. A month ago, you wouldn't like you right now. A month ago, nobody liked me. I did. Time for change. It's not you. <gasps> hey, who knows who I am? I do. I don't know where you are these days, and now you're turning into an A-crowd wannabe? You're morphing into one of them. This is absolutely, totally, without a doubt, unacceptable, which pretty much describes all of your behavior lately. Standing up your brother, humiliating Lily at her own party. How you broke my brother's heart, or how you stuck me with Jeremiah during my cable show doing pick a card, pick a card, pick a card. I'm sorry, okay? I forgot to call you and tell you that I couldn't make it. At first, the Vishaka was unbalanced. You should watch your mouth, little girl. In that the inner virility or Yetzirhara was completely and dangerously ignored and repressed, but now the released virile self begins to treacherously kill or suffocate any remainder of the good inclination. You're a virgin who can't drive. Oh, that was way harsh, Ty. Honestly, is this really what you've become? Judging other girls on their appearance? Calling them weed? In Jekyll's case, Hyde begins to take over even at times he doesn't drink the mixture. You can't be you. We we agree that you wouldn't do this. Someone has to tend to Chunky Butt's sex life. Chunky Butt is extremely horny. Excuse me. Actually, I'm only a figment of Heckle's imagination. He's a horny toad. He only does think about picking up women. I quote Jungian analyst Anthony Stevens, it must be Jekyll, the conscious personality, who integrates the shadow and not vice versa. Otherwise, the conscious becomes the slave of the autonomous shadow. So it's some pretty messed up stuff out there. This isn't your armor anymore, it's just you. This growing, uncontrolled deviancy all relates to themes I've explored deeply before with Jupiter, as the expansion that removes limitations or binds on outer growth. Jason, you have no idea what it feels like to be buddy love. It's indescribable, it's just wonderful. The way people talk to him and treat him, and the way she looks at him. But he's dangerous. Just a minute, sweetheart. I don't recall dismissing you. You rude, discourteous, egomaniac. You're crazy about me, right? And I can understand it. Only this morning, looking in the mirror before shaving, I enjoyed seeing what I saw so much I couldn't tear myself away. It's when you have or are offered something that you're truly tested, as it's only then that you can see if you will restrain yourself and hold on to integrity when you have power. When a diet pace changes you into your favorite image, it rules that image with your subconscious rebellious, infantile, mirror mentality. I'll tell you, go. It turns your head inside out. It fulfills all your dreams and turns you into the kind of person you've always hated most of all, whose powers you've secretly coveted. It's like it, it, it brings your innermost desires to life. In a shocking twist of events, it turns out everything I thought I hated was exactly what I always wanted. Those who love them here find the Vishaka or Jupiterian native increasingly unrecognizable in being possessed by the shadow self. 
What happened to you? You you were so different, and now you're like the rest of them. You used to make fun of the runway girls. What happened? Now now you've become one of them. The genuine and meaningful connections their old self formed with others. Hey, no, 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 you can't talk to us like that. We're helping you here. So don't. Their new self drives away, often in ambitious pursuit. Oh my god. Like, here goes another lemming. Of those with higher status and power. Just be careful who you pretend to be. I'd hate if you forgot who you are. I was nobody, so... Let's see what Chase wants to do. I think he has to make an appearance at Brad Seldon's party tonight. The entire plot of the show Do No Harm follows Vishaka native Stephen Pasquale as a neurosurgeon, Jason, who must battle with and suppress his evil alter ego, Ian Price, using a sedative. We share the same body, but we are not the same. He wants to destroy me. <laughs> he wants to control me. He's dangerous. Being one person is more than enough for any human being to handle. So relating to this, in the most extreme variation of the Jupiterian storylines, the alter ego is so powerful that it operates totally out of the protagonist's and oftentimes the viewer's awareness. <laughs> doing things to protect, fulfill, or avenge their passive side. Ingmar Bergman's iconic persona, starring Vishaka's son B.B. Anderson, was said to mirror Young's theory of the persona and is often considered an expansion on the themes of Jekyll and Hyde. While it follows two women, a mentally ill actress and her nurse, alone together at a beach house, film analysis often concludes that both women are truly one, suggested strongly through confusing, merged dialogue moments and iconic shots of overlapping faces. <laughs> Scholars have described their emotionally charged struggle together representing one personality consuming the other. Or the fusing of two personalities into one. This film inspired other works where the twist includes the reveal of a hidden, operating alter ego. I had no control over what I said or did as a body law. Especially Vishaka Ascendant David Lynch's Mulholland Drive, starring Vishaka Ascendant Naomi Watts as a failed actress, Diane, imagining an adventure with Vishaka Moon Lara Haring, Rita. Anderson's character and persona, as many analysts suggest, may have imagined or personified the other part of herself in the form of an actress she admires, as is revealed as what Naomi Watts did with Rita. In a similar way, in high tension, Vishaka Moon native Cecile de France creates a murderous alter ego out of frustration relating to her deep lustful desire for her female friend. I don't believe the dream I just had. I was in a forest running barefoot. I was hurt and I was being followed by somebody and, well, the more I ran, the more I could sense him coming closer. Who was the guy stalking? It wasn't a guy, it was me. That's the weirdest part. It was me running after me. In Vishaka's son, Martin Scorsese's Shutter Island, Vishaka's son, Leonardo DiCaprio, is introduced as the U.S. Marshal Teddy Daniels, who comes to investigate a crime at a secluded mental asylum, seeking out a man named Andrew Latis. The film eventually reveals that Teddy is Andrew's split alter ego. Your crime is terrible, one you can't forgive yourself for, so you invented another self. Which he created when he could not cope with the tragic event that occurred to his wife and children. In Hide and Seek, Porva Bajapada Punar Vasu native Robert De Niro oscillates between his loving father personality David and his violent, vengeful alter Charlie. He chooses to uh, keep the inner man locked up so that no one steps on him. I quote, Charlie was created as a way to express David's rage so that he could murder his cheating wife, something the docile David was too decent to do. What does Charlie say? Talk to me. What does he say? He says he would have satisfied her. Who told you to say that? Charlie did? No. Throughout the film, Charlie overtakes him completely, eventually stating that David no longer exists. Daddy's gone now. I'm gonna tell my daddy on you, Charlie! Wrong answer. And the name's Hank, fuckface. I'm Dr. Heckle's cousin. I'm taking over his practice. He's been taken suddenly ill. In fact, you could say the old frog is crouching at the threshold of death's back door. Uh, I'm sorry, the, uh, the old Eleanor can't come to the phone right now. Why? Because she's dead. 
Of course, all of these connections has led me to some curiosity regarding Edward Norton's birth time, which I realized under this suspicion is rounded for 2 p.m. and which can be Vishaka within about 10 minutes. I, I, I know that it's gotta seem like there's two sides to me when you're with Two me. sides? You're Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Jackass. I deserve that, but look. His roles in his debut, Primal Fear, and his most beloved film, Fight Club, both deal with themes of dissociative identity disorder. Is Aaron Stampler capable of murder? No, he is not. He is far too traumatized to express normal anger and frustration. He keeps his emotions repressed, which is why he created Roy, who is capable of such a crime. Objection, Your Honor! In the former, of course, the unconscious creation of an alter ego, Tyler Durden. You fuck me, then snub me. You love me, you hate me. You show me a sensitive side, then you turn into a total asshole. Is that a pretty accurate description of our relationship, Tyler? For the empowerment, sexual fulfillment, and liberation of a stifled man. This guy's testosterone levels are right off the charts. He was mean last night. It was so unlike you. Where is Aaron? Aaron's crying off in some corner somewhere. You scared him off. Come on, you've seen Charlie in action. The guy's like origami. He folds under pressure. You gotta deal with me now, boy. Now, returning to the main storyline, a turning point is eventually reached in the stories where the protagonist acknowledges the consequences of his or her increasingly self-serving and even egomaniacal actions. What should have felt exhilarating just felt rotten. I, I was so lost, I barely recognized myself. I mean, look at me. I just got so caught up in it. I was invisible for so long that it felt good to be noticed. I mean, none of this is really me. And, and now I don't even know who my real friends really are. More strongly reawakening their good side and beginning a battle of self. I quote the 1920 version, as Hyde plunged deeper into vice, his trail was soon strewn with victims of his depravity. But you told me you became that monster tonight, not of your own accord. It will happen again. I'll fight it. I'll conquer it. Too late, you cannot conquer it. It has conquered you. No, no, I'll fight it. Get out, I'm through with you, he said. What the hell is going on here? Well, Hank was coming on to me again. Hank? I'm so sick of that guy. I look so stupid. I look so stupid. Stupid! In a sudden revulsion against the power he felt was dragging him down, Dr. Jekyll gave hostage to his soul. For some time, Dr. Jekyll renounced the dark indulgences of Hyde, until in an hour of weakness, the demon, long caged, burst forth more malignant than before. What did I do? I've created some sort of a monster. Professor! If you're in there and you can hear me, come out! The testosterone levels are way too high. You can't control him. I'm losing control. When I put that mask on, I can do anything. Be anything. But it's wrecking my life. My life is wrecked. 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 So he or she wrestles with their alter ego and must rein in this power they've churned through the creation of these two extreme opposites. He ain't a man, he's a devil. You're a lame, you're before it's too late and they're taken over completely. Chairman is gone! This is it! Jada, never been about that. Never, never been about playing no shit. <sighs> Sweet. Get out! Get out, Alan! Yeah, human, he ain't dead. He's a beast. The native now seeks to control their shadow as well as to redeem themselves for actions they've done while under its command. I went a bit mad. I'm sorry. You're my family. I have been in agony the past week, and I can't even believe that I went off the way I did. Are you going? Oh, he was going. Oh, you mean the horribly freakish, distorted version of your former self? Yeah, but now you're back. At this point, too, they may begin disconnecting from the high-status links their alter ego made. Who were you before you met us? No one. And then we made you the one. And this is how you repay us? So the little monster you created destroys John Tucker, and then what? What happens to me? And trying to fix things with their original loved ones. You think I'm cool? I do, and I think you're pretty and smart. What did you form this opinion prior to my little transformation? Way prior. Wow. Why me? Because you saw me when I was invisible. When they finally overcome the alter ego, it's fascinating because this is how they ultimately, for the first time, the achieve real. true balance, reconciling these disparate sides of the self. They end up partaking of the strength and virility of the alter ego by actually becoming a match for it. Okay, hey, come on out here! Let's settle this the old-fashioned way! Come on! This challenge necessitates that they assert the same level of fierce power over it. In order to conquer this seemingly foreign, disassociated expression, of virility or sexiness, they innately have to utilize the bold, brave, and aggressive traits they've learned from channeling it. Jerry, you can't beat me! This is some scary shit! Through conquering the shadow, they prove that they now wield its strength for themselves. Yes, I can! 
realigned with their moral principles. Come back here, Hank! I'm not through with you! <laughs> and have therefore become a whole and balanced person who can both serve and protect others and themselves. Jacqueline loves you. I love me. Who can experience the pleasure of giving and taking. They are only now truly themselves because they've integrated both sides of their personality, the light and dark. Young explained that this balance, this enantiodromia, an overcoming of the persona and then the shadow, is necessary for the path of individuation. You sure you're not gonna miss this guy? He's gone, all that's left is me. To achieve a state of true completion, at some point, one must incorporate the emerged opposing archetype into their psyche. Okay. Even Beyonce stated after a time, I killed off Sasha Fierce. I don't need her anymore. I am Sasha Fierce and I'm much more interested in showing people the sensitive, passionate, and compassionate person that I am. She explained that she's moved beyond the need for Sasha Fierce because she has now, I quote, merged the two. After all that, Nick Twisp was enough. Hannah Montana ends as well with the eventual need for Miley to eliminate the split and live as one authentic being. You're a doorknob salesman. What'd you call it? You're my dad's brother, Philip. You can wake up and you can be one person again. Vishaka's initiatory archway, important in ritual transformations and rites of passage, is considered a symbol in Jungian dream analysis of this concept. It both unites and divides, pairing together opposites, integrating both intense extremes. This nakshatra has the power of the art card in the tarot, that of alchemical transmutation, of the dividing and then the combining of the pure opposing yin and yang principles. The idea of such a spiritual stage is expounded on in Mo Pai training. John Chang explains that the aspirant goes through four initial stages. First, he collects and then compresses yang. Then he must collect as much yin as he has collected yang, at which point they circulate the body together separated. In a difficult state, he describes as constant pain. Like too much to the price of one. At the next stage, you must force them together. Flip. Wake up. And he states, if you are successful by forcing the two together, you also force them to react. Remember, different than electrical pulls, they don't attract but repel. This is how the spark, the lightning bolt between the two is generated, and you begin to become a master. Through taking antagonistic forces which are hostile towards one another, and essentially pushing them together until their friction generates something rare. These opposing forces joined together generates a special, unrivaled power. So each Jupiter rolled nakshatra correlates to a spiritual trial located before a different granthi. Punarvasu is tested with how they will utilize material access and abundance. Purvabhadrapada's purity is tested with how they will utilize moral freedom and knowledge. Vishaka tests especially involve proper utilization of the libido, beginning with immense repression, building pressure and agitation, and leading to a dangerous, explosive release, becoming intoxicated by and lost in the power of the lower nature that they are so unfamiliar with channeling. Completing Libra, Vishaka is all about through this process, discovering equilibrium, finally achieving the balance of not too much or too little. Unlike Punarvasu, where the cosmic being was initiated only into giving, Vishaka stories begin with an overly giving and self-effacing Jupiterian and teach them how to receive and attract as well. Eyes, lovely, but hidden beneath bushman eyebrows. Young states, to the degree in which the shadow is recognized and integrated, the problem of relationships is constellated and becomes the new center of the individuation quest. As you've seen through this video, it's especially in the realms of sex and romance that Vishaka's test takes place, addressing and integrating the two sides of the self rather than exclusively giving or creating, saves and protects them from attracting those unbalanced people of the opposite inclination, oriented towards only exploiting and draining. In neither unbalanced state does Vishaka experience the romantic fulfillment that it craves. Yeah, but even dressed as a woodchuck, I still fantasize about it. It's invisible or ignored in its initial state, lacking in self-worth. Its alter ego eventually drives away anyone it attracts through its egotistical selfishness. It's only at the end when the Vishaka achieves balance that their love interest accepts them romantically. The alter ego does the work of attracting and seducing her when she'd rejected or ignored him before, but it's the sweet her original nature that eventually regains control, where she finds the love and care necessary for her opening to the relationship that closes the story. When I look in your eyes, I see that big, beautiful heart. Oh, it's not me, you see. It's the other guy, the other evil, good-looking guy. The mask. Oh. It's the guy inside the mask. It's you, all along. 
It's through the inner union of opposites and resulting individual wholeness that Vishaka can now access such a stable and healthy union in the outer world. In the end, all of Vishaka's power comes from the equilibrium it's worked so hard for, experientially learning how to embody and channel either of two extremes or a balanced fusion of each, depending on what is necessary for the situation at hand. Flip? Yeah. It's Flip. And Philip. Philip and Flip. Philip? Now they have rejoined their upper and lower centers and can utilize the emerged forces of fearlessness, virility, and ambition, but paired with the compass of innate goodness and compassion. This multidimensional ability to take and give, to be both self-advocating and empathetic, courageous but sensitive, to have both confidence and humility and other inner opposites, are oscillations that are necessary for real success in the material plane, for creating potent work in the arts, and especially for forming healthy and powerful relationships. Don't you know that to take is sometimes a way to give? The most beautiful way in the world if two people love each other. In Jung's words, when one successfully accomplishes the difficult task of reincorporating the shadow, which he refers to as the seat of creativity into the personality, this produces a far stronger, wider consciousness than before. It's through this fusion of self that Vishaka manifests via Panashakti, meaning all-pervading success, achievements across various areas of life. Vishaka attains this unmatched wholeness through extending all the way from one extreme to another, being the vessel of inner married opposite Sits, fully harnessing the shadow but always under the guiding direction of light. I really hope you enjoyed this video. As I mentioned, there will be a supplemental video with information I cut out, especially exploring Vishaka's romantic connection with one specific nakshatra and differences between the Jupiter world nakshatras on my Patreon. It's thanks to my Patreon supporters that this video was created. Their generosity funds the time and energy that I put into the long process of researching, writing, and editing my videos. So please check out my Patreon if you haven't yet. I also now have a very active group chat there for my community to share ideas with one another and I've got a new course coming out sometime soon. I'm so excited to share with you guys as well. So look out for that and updates on that. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you guys soon and a special thanks to my Ray Body level patrons listed on the screen now and to my very generous Apogee level patrons. Thank you so much. Ashley De La Cruz, Ray, Maddie DRX, Eric Linden, Semia Hogan, Teresa Green, Jazz, Nikki, Stephanie Cruz, Crystal Perales, Emily Moon, Bella, E, Murti, T. THP, Afia, Tanya Allen, Cozy, Aaron Shade, Agnieszka Monica, William Rivera, Anna R, Alex Durin, Alpha Hydra, Antoine Sharp, Ashley Rose, Christina Solano, Eric Goodrick, Haya, Honey, Jedi M, JJ, Joanne Schultz, Juliana Sanz, Carl Wilden, Miranda, Natalia Warmly, Nexus, October Ariana, Ryan Loden, SS Phoenix, Andre, Christina Chagula, Jace Settlemayer, Tai Lakshmi, Calvin Sheffield Jr., Alicia, Nia Scully, and Michelle.